One uh, favorite of mine is Shiny because it allows you to so rapidly build interactive web applications for data analysis, um, especially compared to any other web development framework that I've tried. And I, I don't have experience, much experience developing any kind of web tools, but I can very easily use Shiny to get a web application up and running for people to be uh, to have a self-service dashboard that's yeah. click and point. Um, do you want to talk a bit about Shiny? And actually, I think something about it is that it's now, and we're going to talk about Posit soon yeah. and the, the change from RStudio, but yeah. this, this is something that works kind of across programming languages now, right? Yeah, exactly. So there's now Shiny for R and Shiny for Python. And they, you know, they're completely separate code bases, but this, the, the, the idea that really unifies them is this idea of reactive programming. And the idea of reactive programming, I think at its heart is pretty simple. You've got like a bunch of inputs to your app, things that people can change, and you've got a bunch of outputs. And what reactive programming does is it just like automatically figures out what's the minimal amount of work to do when you change one of the inputs to update the, the needed outputs. And that, again, that, that, that's, that's one of these ideas like tidy data that takes, your, takes a little while to get your head around. It's like, Probably it's it's quite possibly an idea you've never encountered before in programming. Uh, like works a little bit differently to things you might have encountered, but like once you get that idea, it just gives you this incredible tool set to create apps that like where things just work, and you don't have to worry about like things either like up updating too often, doing a bunch of needless work, and making your app too slow, or just failing to update, and so you've got these mysterious like bugs in your app where things don't change. And you expect them to, which is like one of the most frustrating things to try and debug when something doesn't happen. That 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 is fun. Yeah. So yeah, shiny, really, really, really cool. It allows you to spin up basically like that Super Nintendo game that I was just describing that just kind of works like you think it should. People don't walk through walls accidentally as they're using your uh, your dashboard that you developed in literally minutes. Yeah, That's it's cool. funny. Like I remember talking to to Joe Ching, who who wrote Shiny, like very early on, and I was like, "Like Joe, you you think our users like want to make websites? Like, <laughs> like you can use like use Ruby for that, use PHP for that. Like, why on earth would a data scientist want to make a website? And now it's like so obvious because you don't want to give decision makers in your organization just like a PDF. You want to give them like a little interactive app." And there's just been so many examples of people just like, you know, really impressing their bosses with Shiny because you can like whip up something in a couple of hours that looks like a polished app, does exactly what you want. Um, I remember a very early phone call from a, cust uh, a Shiny user saying like we saved him a quarter of a million dollars because instead of going and like finding a, a car, like a contractor to implement a web app and a dashboard, he just did it himself over a weekend uh, and, and that like, like not only is that the, like that cost and time benefit but also that like if you as a data scientist can do it yourself you don't have to try and communicate to someone else exactly what you want but that that is tough exactly. working with other people is tough it is and well and this also allows you to make changes yourself um you know if if you notice an issue or a user complains yeah. to you, you can just go in and fix it as opposed to needing to be a middleman, a middle person, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Because I think one of the interesting things about dashboards is like if your dashboard is successful, like people are going to demand changes to it like very, very quickly. Like the if you have a really, really good dashboard, that means like there's going to be like two or three execs in your company who now want to like make a bunch of little tweaks to it. And if that's like some weeks long uh, process where you've got to figure it out, then communicate to some like web engineering team that just like kills the whole thing. And I think with how often executives think they want a dashboard and then related to how often they actually use it, that is another strong yeah. point for using yeah. Shiny because you know, that way you're not wasting weeks or months developing a dashboard. You're you're wasting hours or days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, just in general, that whole like iteration, the more you can do to like increase your iteration speed, like the more effective it makes you. Because again, like it's so hard to predict in advance, like what's the thing that's going to be valuable? Like there's definitely a lot to be said to just like trying out a ton of things and seeing what sticks rather than like doing a bunch of upfront planning and just hoping desperately that you've you know, got a really good mental model of the world and your idea works.